Hello everybody. Today is actually Thursday. Um, this is going to be the lesson though for Monday, which is March 23rd. And so this is going to be the last set of notes that you have for the adaptations and fossil unit. So, um, you know, this that coming week of the 23rd, you are going to be wrapping things up, having your tests. So please just be checking Google Classroom. Um, hopefully the video um, that you watched on the last set of notes, everything went fine. Again, please email me if something is not right, if you are having trouble with anything, if anything is confusing. Um, I don't know unless you tell me. So I'm going to assume that everything's good um, and that you are doing well with your online stuff. Please, again, contact me if you have questions. Okay? So we're going to actually be picking up with slide number 44 right now. And we have just a couple things that we need to wrap up for this unit. The last major idea is something called uniformitarianism. And that's very difficult to say. It's a lot of letters. Um, but this is the assumption that some of the natural processes and things that happened in the past um, are still happening in the future and kind of vice versa. So what's going on now, what's happening then, what happened then is still happening now. Right? Um, and so these processes that we'll talk about here in a minute are everywhere in the universe. So it's not just like in Ohio or not just in Russia, right? It's everywhere in the United States, the world, um, and in the universe, right? The kind of shortcut to understanding this is people say that the present is the key to the past because obviously we didn't live in the past. We don't know what exactly happened there. So we're using clues and evidence from what's going on right now to kind of infer or make the assumption that those same things happened in the past. All right, so some examples. Um, magma cooling and crystallizing to fill ocean basin, ocean basins, excuse me, um, rivers flooding, land masses experiencing a weather, erosion and deposition, and even weathering. Um, all of these are going to support the, or be supported by our fossil index. So those fossils that we identified as useful fossils are going to be able to give us a lot of information, um, basically about this material. Right, so the fossil record's one of them. We also see some um, environmental and climatic changes throughout the fossil index um, as organisms adapted. It's because there were environmental or climatic pressures that kind of um, you know, made certain organisms more fit or less fit to the environment as they changed. Remember, think of the Uncle Scar example. Um, his dark fur wasn't an advantage until you know, the environment changed and got firm. Um, obviously, geologic records will also be helpful in this. And there's something, um, the last topic we'll talk about um, for this unit is something called ice core sampling. And we'll get to that more in just a minute. Um, but all of these things are going to support the idea that things that we see now probably had to be taking place in the past as well. All right. Um, <clears throat> so... The other ones we've already kind of talked about. Ice core sampling is a different idea, and there is a video here. It says drilling for ice. I will have this video linked for you under today's information, um, which again would be Monday um, the 23rd. And so what ice core sampling is, and you can see a picture of it right here, it's a big, huge cylinder of ice. And one of these videos is gonna show you how this process happens. Um, but they drill into a glacier or um, like a polar ice cap and the ice actually records and locks in what was going on in the environment at the time because these form from snow. So anything that is stuck in the snowflakes will get kind of recorded and locked in as that snowflake becomes part of the glacier or the ice, the polar ice cap and then everything kind of starts building kind of like our layers of rock do, the snow will do that as well. So it locks in what was going on at the time that that snowflake got put down um, on the glacier. And so the snowfall collects on the glaciers and captures those, um, the, that information. So information like dust, sea salt, ash, like maybe from forest fires, gas bubbles, human pollutants, okay? Um, and obviously this is a big one, um, the one that we have the most control over, obviously. 
Here's another video of studying ice cores in Antarctica. Again, I will have that linked under Monday the 23rd's um, assignment or activity information. Here's another um, ice core and you can see right here and they're usually pretty long in length. The video shows um, how they store these and, and the process, it's pretty cool. So they analyze the physical and chemical properties of the ice core and they can reveal past variations or changes in climate that range from seasons, like season to season, or maybe even, you know, century to century. And so we can use those records kind of in, com in combination with the fossil record and we can reconstruct the temperature, the atmospheric circulation. So think back to last year with Mrs. Hyo when you guys talked about like trade winds and you know those wind patterns. Um, so some of that gets kind of locked in as you're looking at the um, weathering conditions. Um, precipitation, ocean volume, atmospheric dust, volcanic eruptions, because think of the ash that's there, solar variabilities, um, biological productivity for marine life, um, sea, ice, and desert, and finally forest fires again like with ash and, um, and things that get put up into the wind and then get circulated globally. Okay, so um, this is kind of a, an intense process of getting the ice core and then getting samples off of it. They kind of shave little slivers off. Um, the videos will show this very well. So um, if just the notes are a little confusing, please make sure that you, um, you know, check the videos out. They're really good. Um, also, this is not like going to be something that's extensively covered on the test. It's just kind of giving you a well-rounded picture of how everything together combines to give us Earth's living history. So things like the ice core sampling, things like the geologic record, the fossil record, all of those things in combination with what we know about adaptation and evolution kind of come together and give us this big picture. Because obviously we were not there, nobody was. So we don't know exactly what went on, but we can use clues that we know today, looking at clues from the past um, to kind of put that whole picture together. Okay. Um, and obviously we know that the rock record, the fossil record, all of this is incomplete, but we know enough have been discovered that we can conclude and have a pretty good idea of what was going on um, in the past based on all those things we've talked about this unit. And obviously there's still a lot more information that we'll discover. Our technologies will get better. We'll be able to be more um, specific. We'll be able to gather more information. And as that happens, we'll have to adjust and change our thinking and adapt as we gain new knowledge, right? So we can't just stay fixed and set in our mind with what it is, like this is always gonna be the way it is. I'm sure that you never really thought that you'd be doing school at home. Here we are, right? I'm in an empty classroom again, I'm looking at a bunch of empty chairs and staring at my phone. So, um, you know, we can't always predict what's gonna happen. We just have to be able to kind of adjust our thinking and, and fit in with the new information. So just like with science knowledge, you know, this also is true in real life, just like what you're doing now. Figuring it out, fitting in, and making it work. Um, so when we get new science information, that's exactly what we do. We fit it in with what we already know, we make it work, and we adjust our thinking. So hopefully you guys have a great Monday, or whenever you are doing this, um, again, you are welcome to do these lessons um, at any time. Just make sure you're doing them all in order. Follow Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I am on track where I should be able to have all of this posted for you for the whole week. Um, so hopefully, you know, obviously, hopefully you're starting with Monday's lesson and moving on from there. So have a fantastic day and I hope everything is going well. Again, contact me if you have any questions or trouble with anything. Thanks. Thank <laughs> you.